ஹலோ ஃப்ரெண்ட்ஸ் வெல்கம் டு ஜாவா இஜேபி அண்ட் ஜேபிஏ டுட்டோரியல் ஹியர் வி ஆர் ஸ்டார்டிங் ஏ நியூ சீரியஸ் அண்ட் இன் தி சீரியஸ் யூ வில் லேர்ன் ஹவு டு யூஸ் இஜேபி ஆஸ் வெல் ஆஸ் ஹவு டு யூஸ் ஜாவா பர்சிஸ்டன்ட் ஏபிஐ ஸோ தி ஐடி ஹியர் இஸ் எக்லிப்ஸ் அண்ட் we use wildfly 10.1 as application server and database is sql server so you can use sql server 2005 to 2016 um, so yeah so you can use um, any sql server uh, prefer 2005 or later and wildfly is a uh, 10.1 and eclipse uh, the we will use eclipse neon so that uh, uh, it will be in uh, sync with the wildfly 10.1 so first uh, you have to learn how to set up the wildfly for eclipse so eclipse and wildfly will be in sync uh, when you uh, set it up so that means first you will install wildfly then you will use some of the plugin installation inside the eclipse so that the plugin in the eclipse will contact the world wildfly runtime and from within eclipse you can start and stop the wildfly and you can deploy the application all those stuff you can do so the next one is java servlet tutorial and you can watch this playlist uh, because in ejp tutorial we will use uh, um servlet that will uh, receive input from the user then it will propagate those input to the enterprise java bin so uh, this tutorial use both servlet and jsp so Uh, you should have some exposure towards servlet as well as jsp so the tutorial here whatever you are seeing in two playlist playlist 06 and playlist 07 both will cover uh, servlet as well as jsp and here we have gone somewhat uh, uh deeper look that means we used a jstl and we used a custom tag all the stuff but uh, this ejp tutorial will use the basics of uh, jsp and basics of a uh, servlet so that's why i'm saying uh, if you have exposure of uh, servlet html and jsp then you can directly proceed or if you want to learn servlet and jsp you can go through these two playlist so if you watched all the videos in this playlist then uh, there's a jsp i mean um, this uh, ejp tutorial will go easy or even if you have uh, uh, some basic knowledge on these two that will help but uh, definitely i uh, exposure towards um, servlet and jsp is required to learn uh, java server pages i mean um, enterprise java bins so in this video we will uh, look at the introduction ejp component running in the server as the distributed computing so when we talk about distributed computing that means uh, there will be object that lies in different boxes in the world wide web um, say for example uh, when you are going to some purchasing website like um, uh, say for example amazon you are purchasing something so the product uh, which you browse will come from the amazon website and when you are making payment it may go to a different website say for example if you are going to some banking uh, i mean the net banking mode of payment if you apt after placing all the product in the shopping cart and uh, 
uh, the shopping cart will be managed by the Amazon. But the moment you go to the payment gateway, uh, it may go to a different uh, uh, website. Say, for example, if you use the bank XYZ, then the control will be transferred from uh, um, uh, Amazon to the banking website. From there, you will perform your uh, transaction. Then the banking website will return back the uh, information to the um, uh, online sales uh, website. All right. So this is what called uh, distributed computing. So here the computation is uh, distributed between the retail store, Amazon, as well as the banking website, say the XYZ Bank. So the server in which EJB runs is called application server. Some people will call this as a middleware server also. So that means enterprise Java beans will be deployed on your server and that server is called a middleware server. So in this video series, uh, our application server or middleware server will be the uh, machine which runs the wild fly. So EGB solves problems of concurrent access like uh, connection pooling, multi-threading, all those stuff. So when the moment you use EJB, all these problems will be resolved uh, to you. That means you no need to worry about how to handle the multi-threading, how to handle the connection pooling, all those stuff because the EJB component you build will take care of all those stuff. So even without using EJB, you can perform all these tasks, but you have to hand code the connection pooling, multi-threading, all those stuff in a worldwide web environment. So you can remember how the worldwide web become uh, highly traffic or concurrent access. So in highly populated country, you know the railway ticket booking and how it goes towards the weekend. So it will be crowded and concurrent access will definitely come into picture during the time. Likewise, you can image another website, a high traffic website, I mean. So when you use EJB, uh, the Current concurrent problems like uh, here we have taken two example one is a uh, connection pooling and the other one is the multi-threading uh, multi-threading in the sense of uh, one or more user simultaneously accessing a specific module in the website so as already told EJB components are deployed on the app server and in this EJP tutorial we will use wildfly 10.x so um, in the prerequisite that's why we asked you to sync wildfly 10.x with uh, eclipse neon id so both you can do a web search and install so in the prerequisite it is uh, explained so here wildfly acts as a ejb container so EJB container in the sense the wildfly will contain one or more EJB components and the uh, vendor, wildfly vendor, the middleware vendor takes care of how to initialize and destroy the EJB uh, components. So when we talk about EJB, uh, we can talk about the major components that involved in EJB application development. We can call EJB client. EJB client will be a servlet or JSP web application. Or it can be a plain Java application also that will make a call to the EJB component that is deployed on the server. Or even some other EJB which can act as a client for a uh, EJB. Say for example, as already told, in Amazon website, let's consider there is a EJB component. And in a different machine, uh, 
say some XYZ bank application, there will be one EJB component. So here the bank application EJB may contact the EJB on the uh, Amazon. Similarly, the EJB in Amazon may contact some EJB in the bank application. So in this transaction, one can act as a main AGB and another one can act as a client. So when we develop EJB application, we will pack all the EJB components inside a EJB jar. So it doesn't mean that we have to pack all the EJB inside a single jar, but a EJB jar will contain a EJB bean and the jar can contain one or more beans. That means you may have multiple EJB jar also and each jar may contain one or more EJB, uh, I mean the enterprise Java beans. So inside EJB jar, we need to understand local and remote interfaces. And while we are progressing through this video series, you will understand what is local and remote interface. Um, so for a quick preview, if uh, the EJB jar and the EJB client both are running under a um, uh, same JVM or we can say same Java runtime environment, then the local interface holds good. But when the components are distributed among different machines, so when it is in different machine, definitely there will be two different JVM. One machine have its own Java virtual machine and runtime environment. The other machine will have a different uh, uh, JVM environment, Java virtual machine. So in that case, a remote interface hold good. So EJB jar will contain local or remote interface definition, then it will have been implementation. That means we will define a set of behavior in the interface, so then we will implement in the bean class. So once EJB jar is developed, we will give it to the EJB container. So EJB container can be anything. So it's uh, provided by the vendor. Here the vendor is a uh, wildfly. You can think of um, uh, Oracle WebLogic server. JBoss or IBM WebSphere. So those are all the vendor. So before that you have to check whether the vendor supports EJB development. So in this video series we will concentrate on EJB beans that comes under uh, different category. So entity beans are uh, older one which was uh, used before EJB3. Since in this video series we are going to use EJB3, we will not learn entity bean. Instead, we will use session bean along with JPN. JPA stands for Java Persistence API. So entity bean will uh, persist the Java bean information. So it may be slightly vague uh, at this stage, uh, but um, uh, go through this video uh, once and towards the end of the course, you will understand everything. But uh, since you were learning these terms for the first time, um, it may be a bit boring as well as uh, slightly confusing. But uh, just to hear uh, what um, we are uh, saying here so that uh, when the uh, course progresses, you will understand more. Okay, for now, you can think of entity bean as a bean which will persist some of the data to the database. So, these entity beans are famous before EJB3. So, uh, let's say EJB2.x, during those period, the entity bean will persist the information into the database say for example a specific customer how many order he placed on a, uh, a retail store online retail store so those information when it is persisted in the database it can be retrieved any time
So now here in this course, instead of using uh, entity bean, we will use session bean, but we concentrate more on Java persistent API. So these two together will achieve the entity bean in a even more uh, better way. All right. So the next one is uh, session bean. So here session bean comes in uh, two flavor. One is uh, stateless session bean and another one is stateful session bean that means here we know think of your object a object will have a state right data member that represents the state so stateless means a session bean stateless session bean means it will not maintain any state that means it will have only the function implementation stateful session bean on the other hand will maintain the state so maintain the state means so how long it will exist so it will exist for a user session then what is user session user session is a, a we can say a browser session so user opened say for example user opened a, a internet explorer he browsed to uh, amazon he searched for a specific product a keyboard he placed the order then uh, uh, he closed the browser session so the entire session is called a browser session and stateful session means are useful for this browser session that means once the browser is closed the state will not be maintained but uh, in the browser session the state will be maintained so within a browser session there may be multiple requests right so the first request will be getting the getting into the home page of amazon the second request will be providing username and password and logging in the third request will be browsing through the product and adding it to the cart the fourth request will be placing the order and doing the payment so there will be multiple requests right in a single user session or a browser session for a particular user once user closes the browser the state will not be maintained here in the stateful session bin so to maintain the state between the browser session that means the browser is closed and reopened in that case we will go for a session bin with the jpa that means we persist the information into the database here if it is within a browser session or within a multiple user request then we will go for a stateful session bin all right the next one comes as a message driven bin uh, useful for uh, asynchronous transaction so in this course we will also learn the uh, timers uh, that is also a useful concept under uh, ejb we will learn that also So there is no demo here. We just uh, done with the uh, introduction, and uh, that's all here in this video. Thank you for watching. Bye. So as told in the prerequisite, uh, I just uh, set up the Eclipse Neon and Wildfly 10x to learn this uh, or to proceed with this uh, course. Thanks again. Bye.